All right, we're going to go back to this checklist now. You had a chance to watch one of two performance tasks within um, a kindergarten classroom and a third grade classroom. The reason why I had you watch first, there is, there is a method to my madness, is because I feel as though, at least this is my, how my brain thinks, if I can see it in action first or snippets of it in action, it makes much more sense when I go to look at something on paper then. Because the next one you're going to look at is on paper. And if you start off with paper, it's like, what's this? How would this work? What would that look like? And it's hard for me to visualize how that looks. But if you see it in action first, and it might, it's not the same exact lesson by any means, but you get the idea of the flow of it and what that teacher was doing and how they were going back to the standards and all the things that they pulled together to do cross-curricular in that way, then you can start saying, oh, I never thought of doing that. Or I never thought of putting that with it too. Or I never thought of asking an expert like that to come in. Or I never thought of, okay, I could do a maker space in that way or whatever it might be. So it comes back to then looking at our checklist here of things. And is every single thing in every single assessment? Probably not. But do we want to try and have as many of those as we can within an assessment? Yes. And you might say to yourself, that seemed like really overwhelming because that's a lot that they did within one assessment. How would I ever make that happen? And so if you're feeling like that's too overwhelming, then you start with a chunk of that. And you say, this year, I'm going to try this chunk of that piece of that, of that performance task. And then next year, I'm going to try and add on this. So I'm going to try and add on this. And you can get better at them as they go. So it doesn't have to be a whole, whole performance assessment that you would start in that way to begin with. But here's the ultimate checklist of the task that we would want to have happen. Okay? So some things from the checklist that you saw, and just tell which one you watched before you tell about something on the checklist that you um, talked about within your group. They first started authentic with the um, Minecraft, Minecraft, which kids yeah. love, and then they brought it all together by the end where they had designed the whole thing themselves. So when you went down there, I mean, they hit every one of those attributes, mm -hmm. we felt. And so you started off, like you said, the hook. Yeah. So when kids are hooked into it, and it's their mm -hmm. idea, they get so excited mm -hmm. about it that they are they will love working on this type of project. I basically. do want to put something. We love the cheese it thing too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had never thought of that anyway. Yeah. But. So the connection to yeah. math too, yeah. which oftentimes we don't think of social studies connecting to math in that way, but it was a really cool yeah. connection to it in that way. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Others with the third grade one or other comments um, for that one? I thought it was a, we, we thought that it hit a lot of them. One of the things that we weren't sure about was this clear scoring criteria. And then also in the self and peer assessment and feedback, um, we heard teacher feedback, but we didn't hear peer feedback. Okay. And so that would be more in when you look at how it's written on paper or what rubrics or things you're going to give to kids to be able to self assess themselves or what standards you want them to work on and know that they're working on, that's going to come more probably in a paper copy that you give to them. You're right, we didn't really see that much of that in there, but it would be something easily to put into that. Anybody else have a comment, Sean? They did talk about the revisions. So, they, so there was a point where so I had to move the bathtub because I realized so that the metacognition part came about with like their, their subsequent design work. They kept on... Um, going from where they started and then changing. Um, so that was the, I think that was the metacognition self-assessment side. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about how it really hit three main areas which were engage in authentic work, integrate content and skills, and effectively communicate because they were having to use their speaking and listening standards constantly they had the experts come in, um, so they had a lot of community involvement as well. So whatever they were doing at each step of the project was authentic work that they could get excited about. 
-hmm. Thank you. Any other comments for that one? Okay, how about the K2 one where they um, were doing the environmental one? Thank you. So we thought it was really authentic because it had to do with the younger kids in their playground and the problems that they saw within the playground and then they had to go back and um, come up with their own solutions. And then it brought in a lot of content and skills, whether it was they were picture drawing or they were able to write. And then they brought in like the maker space and they made the tools that they would need. I mean, it was cross-curricular the entire time and it just really, is something that the kids will remember because it had to do with them and their playground and, and how to solve the problems that they came up with. And they also brought in a community member. <laughs> they also brought in a community member and, um, I'm sorry, I hear my voice. <laughs> <laughs> really throw me. No, uh, did really, um, like what, how he learned how to do his job. And so then that way, that kind of led the kids into, okay, how do we know how to do the jobs that we're going to, you know. Have some day. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I mean, it was, it was really cool, so. Yeah. All right, there is a, and it's, of course, the only tech set that's not, like, directly linked yet. But in first grade, there is a jobs tech set that's coming out for the state, too. So that might be a way to connect that tech set in that way. That kindergarten one, I think, is really interesting, too, because it wasn't even as if um, she knew what the problem was going to be. I mean, in her head, I think she had enough sense she was taking them to the playground so she could see that there was things that needed to be fixed on the playground. But the kids actually determined what the problem was, like what their like compelling question would be was how would they fix this then? And then they started on their own brainstorming those situations. So you might, in your head, have an idea of, all right, this is where we could go with it. Or think back to what your compelling question is, since we always want to come back to that compelling question. It should be broad enough that kids could even help determine in what way might you approach that in that way. So you've done your supporting question, your supporting question, your supporting question. And then by the time you get to that, and you're trying to go back to answer the compelling question, it might or might not be about the actual content that you did. 